the Vikings look good Sunday. We're talking real good. Unlike last year's offense led by OC John Filippo, who tried to implement too many schemes, designs, and looks, never really thriving in one specific category, new offensive coordinator Gary Kubiak uses and highlights one and only one primary running scheme with his foundational zone blocking and zone stretch looks. Those looks helped the Vikings jump out to a quick 28-0 lead and they never looked back. Highlighted by a two-headed monster, Dalvin Cook and rookie Alexander Madison tallied a combined 30 carries for 160 yards and two touchdowns. More importantly was just how consistent the two looked early on, averaging well over five yards per carry in the first half. Now we'll have all season to break down exactly who, what, where, when, and why this new look Kubiak and Stefanski offense is clicking, and what exactly are the specific catalysts to a rushing attack that looked in mid-season form. But when I flipped on the tape and rewatched the film, there was one obvious tendency that had a large part to do with the Vikings' ultra-efficient performance on the ground. This subtle yet clearly highly effective wrinkle was hiding in plain sight for the whole world to see as the Vikings made no effort to conceal it or get cute and fancy in their ways of using it. So, what was it? Something that's been around since the birth of the game? Pre-snap motion. You might laugh that something so elementary played a big part in the team's monster day running the football, but flip on the tape, the proof is in the pudding. Let's start with their first big run. First quarter, second and nine, Vikings come out with two tight ends and two running backs, also known 22 personnel with both Rudolph and Irv Smith starting on the right side or strong side. They put Irv Smith in motion from right to left and despite it now being a balanced formation, based on the pre-snap motion, the Falcons become more alert and cautious of a run following the motion man, Irv Smith. What does Kubiak call? A run away from the motion man, Irv Smith, and back into the strong side of the field where thanks to some outstanding blocking, Cook is able to use all that extra space and gash the defense for a big gain to get the momentum rolling. Just two plays later, Vikings down in enemy territory. Now in the 11 personnel look, three receivers, Rudolph and Cook. Once again, you've got the same thing with pre-snap motion, moving away from the strong side, forcing the Falcons to stay cautious about an extra blocker. This time, however, they catch the Falcons sleeping as they get Thielen back in motion with now a head start to get out in front with some serious steam, which he uses to put a nice pancake block downfield. As the Falcons look flat-footed and a half step slow, along with once again, the dynamic speed of Cook to the perimeter, nearly in touch for six. Watch it again as we've got a more traditional power run with man-on-man -man blocking this time as Cook presses the original hole and forces those linebackers up into their gaps before exploding outside following a great pull block by Josh Klein and again Adam Thielen downfield. Two completely different run designs, the first being a zone concept, the second being a power concept, but pre-snap motion being the common denominator and possibly the catalyst in keeping the Falcons on their toes and guessing which way the run is designed. Let's do another one. Cook's been running rampant, needs a breather, so it's Madison's turn for some action. Still first quarter, first and ten. Hey, this formation starting to look a little familiar yet? It should. It's the exact same 22 personnel with two tight ends starting strong side, and yep, you guessed it, Irv Smith Jr. motioning to the weak side before the snap. Defense is forced to check back into a more balanced front and stay honest in case of a weak side run, now with Irv balancing out the formational look. Sure enough, same toss play we got the first go around leading to another similar result as it's Madison's turn with a big rip. Check out the All-22 here and just how important and influential motioning Irv Smith is here as both Deion Jones and Devondre Campbell nearly take themselves out of the play or at least there would be gap assignments before the snap. Outstanding play design 
And of course, just more great downfield blocking and into the second level by C.J. Ham, who takes out two players along with Garrett Bradbury, Josh Klein, and even Kyle Rudolph, who might have had the best day blocking I've seen from him maybe in his entire career. Coincidence? I think not. I got more. Six and change left. Second quarter. Rookie Madison back in the game. Are you seeing a trend yet? 22 personnel. Here comes Irv Smith motioning away from the strong side to air out the Falcons' defensive front seven away from where they want to run the ball. Sure enough, we get another explosive scamper with more fundamentally sound blocking leading the way. Into the second half we go, Vikes still playing heavy ball control, now facing consistent nine-man boxes. Stop me if you've heard this. Two tight ends with a fullback gives us 22 personnel, both tight ends on the strong side. Motion Irv Smith over to the weak side, get that defense leaning and opening up just a pinch of extra breathing room as they run back to the strong side and away from the motion man. You know the rest. Great downfield blocking by Elfline Pull and CJ Ham leading the way. Combine it with that freaky explosion and acceleration by Cook for a quick eight yards. But are you seeing the common theme here? Pre-snap motion away from the strong side, people. It got the Falcons defense leaning and cheating the wrong way and was a huge success on nearly every one of the Vikings' explosive runs. It speaks volumes to the game plan and coaching nuances of both Kubiak and Stefanski, who have now put on tape. They can run the ball down your throat with both zone and power schemes effectively and will choose to do so until a defense proves they can stop it. Now, I'm not here to say the Vikings can't run the ball effectively without pre-snap motion. Second and four, 641 left in the second quarter. Cook scampers for 21 in large part due to some flat out terrific blocking, both at the first and second levels and by both linemen and receivers, giving it a total team effort feel. However, outside of this rush here, every other explosive run that went for 10 or more yards did indeed come with pre-snap motion as shown earlier. Here's more. Last one and very next play, both tight ends, strong side. They stay over there this time, though, and it's Adam Thielen who shifts all the way over to the other side of the field, shifting the defensive keys and forces them to hesitate just enough at the last second, allowing Dalvin Cook to walk into the end zone behind a great design pull by Irv Smith. Vikings ran the ball a lot Sunday, 38 times, a matter of fact, for a monster day in the ground and the majority of those runs did not include pre-motion. But, like I've said, when their ground game was most lethal, it's clear to me the game plan was led by that pre-snap motion away from the strong side, moving linemen and linebackers out of their gaps and confusing their keys, which kept the Falcons' defense guessing and unable to stop this new and improved offense. And I'm not saying any and every big run this season by the Vikings will showcase that pre-snap motion. But I'm also telling you, it was damn near flawless Sunday, so it sure wouldn't hurt until defenses can prove otherwise. Midway through the second half, Vikings went with a much more conservative approach on the ground, keeping their bag of tricks in their back pocket for their next opponent. Rarely using that pre-snap motion and expending far less effort trying to disguise their run looks. Can't sit here and say that this trend will continue, but after my first film session of 2019, it's clear for me what the Vikings had the most success at and with, and the catalyst they used to transcend favoring looks into big time runs. Check out plenty more Vikings breakdowns all on zone coverage and the new and improved zonecoverage.com. For now, I'm Luke Inman, signing out.